Hey you guys and welcome back to another installment of Clean Skin and Dirty Deeds, also known as Snapped in Skin Care. So this week we are on episode four of the first season of Snapped. So this week's story is all about Elena Kelichis. If you want to hear all about this story that is filled with money, sex, and crime, make sure you stay tuned. Okay, so first of all, you know I gotta say shout out to my busy bees. Thank you for sticking around. Hey sis, hey sir. For those of you who are just finding my channel, please make sure that you subscribe. I am positive you won't wanna miss any of the good things that I have coming your way. Not only do I do snapped and skincare, but I also do true crime and makeup. I do videos on fragrances and a bunch of other beauty related stuff. So make sure you are subscribed to the channel. You don't wanna miss out. Also make sure you hit that notification bell so that you get notified whenever I post new content. Now let's hop right into today's video. So you know that skincare, you know, it's more than just about what you put on your face, what you put on your skin. It's also about what you intake in your body. So I wanted to do a quick shout out to a couple of things that I use to take care of my skin from the inside out. First of all, you know you gotta drink your water. I'm not the best at getting all my water in, but I try, I try. That is the number one thing that helps to clear the skin, y'all. The second thing that I love to use, if you didn't know, you also need a certain type of protein to help with your hair, your skin, your nails, your liver function, your joints, your knees, girl, you want the Megan knees, you need collagen. It's a powder. It's usually tasteless. There are some brands where you get that proteiny taste, even though it doesn't have a flavor or anything, you can kind of get that proteiny taste. Y'all know what I'm talking about in some of these collagens. One that I found that recently I've been using and I really love, it's a super clean, it's a marine collagen. And that is from The Reserve. I have only been using it for a few days, but typically I I use collagen every morning, different brands, and I usually put it in my coffee. I cannot taste it in my coffee. So if you want radiant skin, skin that looks like it glows from the inside out, you need to put these things into y'all's bodies. I thought that I would just plug that in there along with things like hair and nail vitamins, things like that that have the folic acid and the vitamin Bs that you need. All of that is in these as well. These taste great. These also came from the reserve along with my collagen protein powder. And these are strawberry and coconut flavor. They are gummies, if you can see that. They taste amazing. The flavor is on point. So those are two things that I just wanna kinda plug out there to let you guys know that really, really help to support the skin. You need to do that from the inside as well, okay? So just throwing it out there, but let's get into this story. So Elena was born in Moscow, Russia on April 15th of 1966. Now she was born into a poor family. Her mother was a drug addict. So she was really, really born into pretty much the worst possible situation she could have been born into. When Elena was 17 years old, she met a 34 year old man by the name of Boris Kiliches. And he was also from Russia, from Moscow. He actually was a married man with children at the time, but he was a millionaire jet fuel magnate so this 17 year old girl caused this 34 year old man to leave his wife and children behind to start a new life with her now boris he had about 
eight business partners in this business that he was running in the jet fuel business. Now, this was a very dangerous business, especially in Russia. This was a very dangerous business. And all eight of the partners that he had were murdered. So they felt like, mm, maybe Russia ain't that safe anymore for us. So let's go on and get up out of here. So that's what they did. They first moved to Poland. And then after moving to Poland, they moved to the US. Specifically, they moved to a place called Brighton Beach. And that was in Brooklyn, New York. It was an upscale community within Brooklyn. Now in 1992, Elena gave birth to her and Boris's first child, which was a boy. And then two years later, Elena gave birth to a little girl. So they had, you know, the American dream in terms of the family. Now, after having their two children, they decided that they wanted to move to a bigger and better house. So they decided that they were going to move to, to Tote Hill in Staten Island, which was another very upscale community. And they ended up buying a 9,000 square foot home. And I mean, this home was bomb when you think about it. It had an indoor heated pool. But of course, that was not up to par for Elena. She gutted that whole house and rebuilt it from scratch. Even though they were... Living in the US, Boris still needed to spend about three out of four weeks of every single month in Russia. He needed to be there to conduct his business. That's how they made their, their money. He was the plug for the money. So that is what was needed. So Elena just had to put up with being alone, being home with the kids for three out of four weeks every month. But she did really try to make the most of when he was home. They tried to do, you know, things with the kids so that he could spend time with the family whenever he was actually in the U.S. In March of 2000, Elena had planned the ultimate getaway for the kids. They were supposed to go to Disney World. Now, it's typically a family event when you take the kids to Disney World, right? So... That's what everyone else expected, but Boris did not go with them to Disney World. And, you know, to most people, that would have been strange to not have dad along with such a big event, a big trip. But to Elena, that was nothing new. You know, if he had to be in Russia when the trip was taking place or he had a last minute call where he had to take care of some business instead, he just wasn't going to be able to come. So this appeared to be no different. Boris wasn't able to come. He was working, he needed to make some money and that's what, that's just what it was. Now, it did become somewhat of a big deal when they got back from Disney World and Boris still was nowhere to be found. And at first, you know, people thought maybe he's in, you know, Russia, he's still in Russia, but he never came back. So around April 2nd of 2002, Elena gets drunk one night and she stumbles into the police station of Staten Island and she reports her husband missing. Now, when they ask about where he could possibly be, his last whereabouts, she said, oh, you know, I don't know where he is. He usually goes to Russia. I think he's probably in Russia, but police check. He's not in Russia. He has not been to Russia and he's not in the U.S. He, he's, he hasn't been seen in the U.S. Now, after he was reported put missing, police did eventually find his car sitting near Brighton Beach boardwalk, but still no Boris. Now, Elena did mention to police that although Boris did not go with them, to Disney World. Right before that, her and Boris did have a really big argument. She didn't mention what it was about, but she did mention that he had threatened for divorce. And that was kind of the end of it. That was the end of the argument. She went on her way to Disney World. He went wherever he was going, which she tried to make it seem like 
It was Moscow. The very same day that Elena walks into the police station drunk, stumbling and reporting her husband missing, a man by the name of Messiah Justice, who is an aspiring rapper, but also a con artist and an ex-con, he calls the police station the very same day with some tea about Miss Elena and her husband, Boris, okay? He calls and he tells the police, you know, hey, I just wanna give y'all a little bit of information about Miss Elena. Apparently, they had met two years prior and he had originally kind of struck up a conversation with her about starting some type of designer fashion line and he had given her his information and she called him and from that point on he kind of charmed her and they ended up starting an affair and it had been going on for about two years. Now he had said that they originally started this affair and they would meet up in hotels in NYC, but with her husband being gone three out of four weeks of every month, Messiah moved in, okay? He just moved in. The kids knew about him. They knew that mommy had a boyfriend when daddy wasn't home and he was there three out of four weeks of the month. He was driving daddy's cars. He was spending daddy's money. He was eating daddy's food and sleeping in daddy's bed, but he wasn't daddy. He said that Elena called him and kind of spilled the tea on what she had done to her husband. And she was asking for Messiah to help her dispose of her husband's body. Now, what she had told him was that she had told Boris about her boyfriend, Messiah, and this is what actually started the argument right before they were going to Disney World. This triggered him to blow up completely and say that he was gonna divorce Elena. He was taking his bags of money with him and he was gonna leave Elena destitute, poor, penniless on these streets. And Elena was not having that. She had the lavish life. She was not gonna give that up for anyone or anything. And she was also a sugar mama to Messiah. So she needed to keep that income. She needed to keep her good life for her kids, for herself and for her boo. So she took care of her husband and now she needed Messiah to help dispose of the body and any evidence. This is his story to the police, according to Messiah Justice. Now, a few weeks later on April 25th, a couple of kids actually find Boris's body floating in the water at Jamaica Bay in Queens, and his body has been stuffed inside a cardboard barrel, and he's wrapped in towels and sheets and all types of home goods items, and he's been shot in the back of the head, and that is how he died. And when he was examined, they pretty much determined that he was probably shot while he was either sleeping or lying down and pretty much had no time to react. That's how he was shot in the back of the head. Now, also after they found Boris's body, they bring Messiah Justice in to actually question him and speak to him in person. Now, when they talk to him, of course, he has a lengthy rap sheet. He's done everything from armed robbery, assault, selling drugs, weapons charges, con charges, you name it, he had it on his, his sheet, okay? And he basically said, look, I will tell y'all everything, whatever you need to know, I'm not going down for what she did, okay? Not me. So he said that that night, she had called and asked for help. She had killed her husband and she needed help disposing of his body. So Messiah came over, they wrapped him up in the basement in whatever they could find and they put his body into a Range Rover. They also collected any toys or stuffed animals that were also around in that area in the basement and they packed that stuff up to get rid of that as well. Now, Messiah said he took the items that were laying around that they had packed up and Boris's body. And he disposed of the toys and the stuffed animals like near a school in a garbage can. He actually had dumped 
Boris's body into an abandoned building. But he had later came back with someone else. They didn't say who it was. And I don't even know if that person was ever found or charged for assisting in disposing of a dead body. But him and someone else came back and moved the body and actually put it into the body of water where the kids later found his body. Now, when they brought Elena in and said, look, your boo has spilt all of the tea. So either you tell us your side of the story or this is what we rolling with. And she said, absolutely not. Of course, what else would you expect her to say? This, according to her, did not happen that way. And basically she said just the opposite. So she said that he was angry. He being Messiah was upset that she had told Boris about their relationship. He felt that his money would be cut off because she would be cut off. And he also knew that her husband Boris was a crazy Russian and he was expecting to be dealt with. But basically the police did not believe her story. They believed Messiah's story. So they arrested Elena and they let Messiah go. So about two years later, the trial actually starts for Elena Caliches. The trial starts June 6th of 2002. And basically the prosecution painted her as, you know, a spoiled gold digging wife and cheater who was tired of her fat, old and ugly husband. Just wanted his money and wanted nothing to do with him whatsoever. They basically said that he had told her, you know, I'm divorcing you. I'm leaving you destitute. You're not getting a penny more of my money. And she was not having that. So she decided, according to prosecution, to divorce her husband Russian style. Now, what in the stereotype? Now, they had also called their maid to the stand who testified that typically her off day is Sunday, but... This particular week, Elena asked her to be off on Saturday and she wanted her to come in on Sunday instead. And when she came in on Sunday, she had specific instructions on what she wanted her to clean. She wanted her to clean the basement specifically and she wanted to also focus on the doors to the boiler room in that basement. She wanted to make sure that was spotless. Now, police did go down there with the luminol and they sprayed everything in that basement, but they found no traces of blood whatsoever in the basement. But the prosecution did say that when all of this happened, they were getting the carpet changed and there was carpet in the basement and the carpet that they were removing was moved to the garage. But when they checked the carpet that was in the garage, there was a four by four square of carpet that was completely missing. So the prosecution alleged that this four by four square of carpet was where all the blood was. And that's why they cut it out of the rest of the carpet and they couldn't find it anywhere in the home or anywhere else. Now, police had also found sheets and home goods that were used to wrap Boris's body up before it was disposed. And it actually matched those same types of items that were in the house. So the sheets that they used to wrap his body were also found in the home of Boris and Elena Caliches. Now, the defense basically said, look, we know Elena is no saint, okay? We know that she is not the world's best wife. We know that she ain't the world's best mom. But what she is not, is she is not a killer. She did not kill her husband. She had no reason to kill her husband. He was actually her golden ticket. And the way that she kept her lavish lifestyle, so why would she kill her husband? That was the defense's argument. They even agreed that Boris was killed in the basement of the home. But they tried to say, that doesn't matter. Where it was done doesn't matter. What's important is who pulled the trigger. And they continued to push the thought process that it was Messiah that pulled the trigger. They even went so far as to say, I mean, look at her, you know, she's a, a tiny 100 pound 
blonde woman who basically was too small to her to fly. And then on the other hand, we have this black thug. Who do you think did it? Sis, anybody can pull a trigger. We see kids playing with guns in Chicago every day pulling triggers. Now, Elena did not end up testifying in her own trial. They didn't feel like it was necessary. They felt like the prosecution did not have enough information or evidence to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that Elena was responsible for murdering her husband. The jury was not having that. They went to deliberate and it took them an hour and 20 minutes to find Elena Caliche's guilty of murdering her husband. And shortly after that, she was sentenced to 22 years to life in prison for the murder of her husband, Boris Caliches. And she has appealed repeatedly at both the state and federal levels of government, and they have all denied her. Now, Messiah did not get away 100% scot-free. He did have some lesser charges that he needed to be sentenced for as a part of the deal of him at him testifying against Elena. And he decided that he wasn't gonna show up for his sentencing for his lesser charges. So he was then declared a fugitive and he was captured with a fugitive warrant on his name and was sentenced to seven years in prison. But that's, that's all he got for his involvement in the murder of Boris Caliches. As far as the children, Boris's brother now has custody of both the son and the daughter. So yeah, guys, that is the story of Elena Caliches, who was convicted of, you know, divorcing her husband Russian style. But I hope you enjoyed today's installment of Clean Skin dirty deeds and let me know in those comments down below if you are enjoying this series what you thought of the story i would love to hear from y'all y'all know i love engaging also a couple of things i wanted to point out that i kind of used that were new in my skincare routine tonight one of those things was the eva naturals skin clearing serum and this serum, y'all, I got it off Amazon. It was on Prime Day, but it has so many great reviews. And it was only like $11, I think. But it has vitamin C, salicylic acid, hyaluronic acid, niacinamide, retinol, and MSM all in one serum. And I think this is obviously perfect for nighttime because if you're doing a vitamin C serum, you have to put on sunscreen during the day. It can be very, very irritating to the skin if you don't protect your skin in the sun during the day. It also has retinol, which is good for nighttime use. So I think this is kind of a great night serum. It has everything in a bottle, y'all, and it's $11. The, the reviews were ridiculous, like thousands upon thousands of positive re reviews. Almost all of them were five stars. So I had to try it. So we'll see how this goes, y'all. The other thing that I've been using is this Malay Plump It Up Moisturizing Nourishing Cream. And this is a skincare line that is geared towards melanin-rich skin. And I actually received these in a influencer box for me to review and share my thoughts on for the company. So, so far I'm really loving it. It gives my skin a beautiful glow, but it doesn't make my skin feel oily at all. My, my skin feels extremely soft, extremely plump. And when I wake up the next morning, it feels the same way. I don't feel any residue left on my skin and it just feels soft and plump in the morning. So I'm loving this so far. Let me know if you guys have heard of either one of these products. They're both brand spanking new to me. So I'd love to hear your ex experience with either one of these if you used them at all before. But y'all, other than that, I'm about to go ahead and have my skin and hair gummies from The Reserve. These things are so good. If you're interested in either the collagen or the vitamins from The Reserve, I will leave a code down below for you guys to use. You get a pretty penny off of these, y'all, so make sure you snap these up. These are really, really good. Strawberry and coconut, bomb. Those and the collagen are definitely my two favorite products from The Reserve, so check them out, y'all. 
But other than that, y'all, it's been so fun sharing another Snapped and Skincare story with y'all. And until next time, y'all, I love you guys. I'm tired. I got at least two more days with these kids by myself. So I'm going to get some rest. I'm, I'm going to get some rest, y'all. So I'll see y'all later. Love you guys. Bye.